we are, as Pastor Mark said, we're in a six-week series uh, on facing a crossroads, coming to a point in life where decisions have to be made, and oftentimes changes have to be made. Now, I got to tell you the truth. The most crucial part of this series is next week. It, it really, it, I, I, uh, I've really been praying about this and thinking about it. Next week, Pastor Mark is going to teach or preach or instruct us on the crossroad of faith. We can't do the rest without the best, and that's faith in Jesus Christ. So uh, here's what I want to challenge you to do. Uh, we have seven days till we meet again. Invite someone. Just uh, I, I walk every day through town, and uh, if I see someone I know, I'm inviting them to church. And if I don't see them here this Sunday, I'll look for them next. But it's just that message next week, uh, the crossroad of faith is going to be crucial, I believe, to the growth of this body, both us individually and personally, and numerically in reaching our community. So pray about that, would you? Uh, get someone here next week. Uh, I'm excited to hear Pastor Mark's message. Uh, I know it's going to be a life-changing one for all of us. Now let me, let me ask. I, uh, I've been asked not to move too much because I do move quite a bit. But, uh, so I'll stay in the middle. I, th you're going to hate me for this. You really are because you're going to be aware of what I'm going to tell you, and it's going to drive you crazy. But do you ever notice when you're driving a car, even on a straight road, you're constantly moving the steering wheel? What, what, what are you doing? You're staying on the road. Uh, whether it's a bump or the wind, I mean, the car has a tendency to drift. And so you, in driving, you're going to constantly be adjusting your direction. That's kind of like repentance. And repentance isn't a one-time event. I am convinced that repentance is a process. And that's what I want to focus on today, the process of repentance, the process of turning, the process of realigning our lives until we see Jesus face to face. Now, our foundation text, and I, I, it's, a, it's a great text, uh, and I'll be reading it to you every week and hopefully make application to it on the topics of which we'll be speaking. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it and you'll find rest for your souls. I mean, that's a tremendous promise. That's a tremendous bit of direction for us. But unfortunately, many times we answer like ancient Israel answered. No, we're not going to walk in it. I'm going to choose my own direction, my own path, my own way. I'll take my chances. Gambling, betting against God is a bad bet. It's a bet, it's a gamble, you cannot win. Acts chapter 3, verse 19, and it's going to be the hub of this message this morning. Uh, the apostles, I mean, my goodness, in, in chapter 3, the church has just been birthed. The day of Pentecost came. 5,000 people were converted. People were baptized. The church exploded into growth. And this is the message to the young church to the first church, and it's been the message for 2,000 years. Repent. Repent, therefore, and turn again that you, your sins may be blotted out. And the focus on, on this translation that I, that I chose, the word repentance uh, is, is a verb, and it's in the active voice. That means it's not something we do once. It's not something we have done. It's a continuing process. It's, it's uh, turning again and again and again 
and again, like driving our cars. We're going in the right direction. We're on the right road, but we constantly must be adjusting our direction. Eleven times in the book of Acts alone, we're commanded to repent, to turn. And what I have found in, in my life, uh, it's constant. It's a process. I, I remember when I first was saved, Pastor. Billy Graham Crusade, right here in Steubenville, July the 3rd, 1972. He's, and I remember this. We, I, she, uh, Sherry and I were attending a Baptist church. And the only reason I was attending is I broke a leg and I couldn't race motorcycles anymore, at least for the while, until my leg healed. So I was going to church with her, being the good husband that I am. And, and they invited us to the Billy Graham crusade. And, and, and I went because Ethel Waters, I saw her in the movies, was going to be singing. And I remember that night, uh, she sang Sparrow, His Eyes on the Sparrow. And we were called to repent and come forward. And I grabbed Sherry and I ran forward. And I repented of everything that I knew that I was doing wrong. I said, I'm not going to murder anymore. I'm not going to steal anymore. I mean, all the big ones. You know, they were pretty easy, I thought. But what I found about repentance and turning from sin is a process. For the deeper you dig into your own sin, the darker you find it to be. And at the very root of our sin, I have found and Billy Graham taught this. I'll never forget him saying these words. He was asked, what's the greatest sin? And he said it, and he answered it in one word. Pride. And when you, deep, when you dig deep into your own sin, your own ways, and you get down to the very root of your sin, you're going to find at the base of it, the cause of it all is pride puffed up, arrogant, I can do it, it's my way, my call. The archangel Lucifer brought his demise. I'll be like God, he says. The darkest, the greatest, the most hidden sin in every one of us is pride. I've been walking with the Lord now for almost 50 years and I find that I'm in constant, I mean, I, I, my car is way out of alignment. You know, it wants to drift all over the place. Maybe you've got a car like that, and it takes a lot of work to keep it going straight. That's my life. But as we sang this morning, the Holy Spirit is the one who will keep us on the straight and narrow, keep us on the right road, guide us, let us know when we're veering off. Last week, joking that, I, were, I told Sherry when she was, and it was a joke, it really didn't happen. The guy was going to rob her, and she out, yelled out, Acts 2.38, and the guy fell on the ground. You remember the story if you were here? And he thought she meant that she had uh, two thirty-eights and an axe, so he surrendered. But the verse is Acts chapter 32, verses 38 and 39. Peter he replied to the congregation, he says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for forgiveness of your sins, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. See, that turning, and this is crucial, and it isn't so much of just turning from what we did. I, I can remember, I, I worked in Weirton Steel. I was in a fire department. And, and anybody else work in the steel mill? Yeah. Well, guys especially, you know that there's a vocabulary in the steel mill that's, we'll say, rough. And so, I mean, I, so that one of the things I thought I needed to repent of was my language. And, and I, I was pretty good at it. And every once in a while, I'd get angry, and it would come back. And I have to repent again. And what I found that I was doing wrong, I was trying to stop sinning on my own 
with my own strength and my own power. I can do it. I, I can toughen up. I, and I remember it was months and months I hadn't sworn, I hadn't cussed, I hadn't used the vocabulary of the steel mill. And somebody got me mad. And every one of those verbs came back. And they just spewed out of my mouth. And, and, I rem and I've been witnessing to the guys in the fire department. And one guy's name is Redcraft. He's sitting there drinking coffee. Didn't even look up at me. He just said, hey, tell him. I said, what? Sure wasn't very Christian of you. Broke my heart. I, I literally just start weeping. I, matter of fact, I, I was weeping so much, the fire chief made me go home. Repentance isn't trying to stop something. True repentance is being sorry for something. It's not just a change of mind. It's got to be a change of heart. And listen, church, only God can do that. I can't change my heart. Only he can. The prophet said, man looks at the outward appearance. That's who we are. We're mankind. We're humankind. And all we can see is the flesh and the, the outward appearance. And not only of others, but our own selves. But God, God looks at the heart. And only God can change a heart. I can't. The Holy Spirit of God coming in you, Christ in you, is the only hope of glory for true repentance, for true turning. And here is the key of repentance. It's not just turning from sin. I've known drunkards who have stopped drinking. I've known thieves who have stopped stealing. I've known prostitutes who have stopped their prostitution. I really have. I've known liars who have stopped lying. But they're going to end up in the same hell that they were headed for before they stopped. Because they did it in their own strength. They did it in their own flesh. And, and they did I did it. I overcame. I did it my way. Your way and my way isn't the right way. Christ is the only way. <laughs> Gee, thanks. That was pretty good, I have to say. I'm going to say that again. Turn to Jesus. Turn to Jesus. I'm going to be challenged on this, but I really believe it. I would rather you turn to Jesus than try to turn from your sin. Because here's what I know. If you turn to Christ, you will automatically turn your back on your sin or the process of it. You can't look at Jesus. You can't follow Jesus and stay in your sin. You can't, it's impossible. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, forgetting those things that are behind and focusing on ahead. On, on ahead. If I focus on my sin, uh, here, I used to race motorcycles. And here's what I learned. You only look where you want to go. Driving in Ohio, West Virginia, even worse. I can promise you this. If you're going down a road and there's a pothole, and you look at the pothole, you'll hit it. You will always go where you're looking. And when I would race motorcycles, I would focus on my line. I didn't, I didn't look where I didn't want to go. I only looked where I wanted to go, and I, I wasn't the best of riders, but I had the best of lines, and I would often win. And I would beat other riders who were better than me because I kept a better line than them. And in the kingdom, if we keep the right line, if we keep our focus on Jesus Christ and him crucified, to be determined like Paul, I am determined not to know anything other than Jesus Christ and him crucified. When I sin and I sin, here's what I do. I confess it. 
And then God is faithful and just to forgive me my sin and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Lord, I blew it. Oh, Lord, forgive me. Okay, son, come this way. Come this way. And I can promise you this. If you try to overcome your sin, whether it be alcoholism, drug addiction, pornography, and the list is endless in our day because there's so much available to us in the realm of sin. If we struggle and we fight to overcome it, most likely it'll defeat us. But if I give it to Jesus, I hold his hand or he holds mine, and I walk where he's going, and I follow his path, I cannot help but to walk away from my sin. And again, it's a process. I, my son, Tony, when he was a little boy, we lived in, in Weirton on uh, Weirview Street. It was a real street, deep, deep street. In the winter, they would put gravel or slag on a, you know, for traction. And he was coming out from school one day, and it's just a little guy, and he's running down the hill really fast. And I said, Tony, don't. And that was a terrible mistake because he thought I meant stop. And when you're running full bore into sin and you try to stop immediately, you know what's going to happen? You're going to crash and burn. And most of us and many of us in some point of our lives have been running downhill full bore into sin, throwing caution to the wind, doing the very thing that we try to get away from, but yet we we're running, and the momentum of sin is powerful. But God in his mercy, when you're running full bore into sin, he tells you, slow down, son. Slow down, my daughter. Just start to go a little bit to the right. Just veer your direction just a little bit more. God's been turning me around for 50 years. I, th I think I'm about a maybe a 70-degree angle right now. Uh, but I'm heading in the right direction. And his grace and his mercy won't let me fall, won't let me keep going in the direction that I'm going into. Now, listen, sometimes when you turn and you're running downhill into sin, all of a sudden you're facing what looks like an uphill battle. And often it really is an uphill battle because the enemy doesn't want to lose you. He comes, as Pastor Mark said earlier, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus said, no, listen, I've come that you have life and you have it abundantly. Follow me. Follow me. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Follow me. Though your sins be as scarlet, I'll make them as white as snow. Follow me. Turn to me. Don't focus on turning from your sin. Focus on me. And he will deliver. Turn from the direction you may be walking. Turn from the direction you may be running. Turn from the direction. Listen, you may be falling. We will get to a point in our sin. The earlier, the quicker we turn from it, the less damage it can do. And I know some of you have fallen. You're over the abyss. There's nothing to grab onto. There's nothing to hold onto. There's, there's nowhere to turn because you, there's, you're, you're just falling. You're, you're just in space, falling into greater darkness, but you will call on him. He'll reach down and grab you by the hand and pull you back up. He's a powerful God. He's a great God. He's a merciful God. He's a loving God. He wants you to turn from your sin, not so he can say how good you are, but that you will know how good he is. Our text in I'll use these three words, uh, each message that I have the privilege of preaching. Stop, look, 
ask Jeremiah 6.16. Stop the direction you're going in. Stop. Hold on. Slow down. Take a break. Come to church. Stop. Rest for a moment. Look. The problem with so many of us, we don't examine our own lives. Sometimes it, turn off the television, turn off the radio, the music, unplug your computer, get off of Facebook just for an hour or two. Go sit on a swing. That's my favorite place. I, I, I swing. When I'm swinging, I'm swinging. And I listen, I, I look, I examine my own self to see where I am in my relationship to Jesus. Here's my go-to prayer. This is a part of my notes. This is free. I can see what time it is. The Apostle Paul, Saul of Tarsus, persecuting the churches, stoned Stephen, the first deacon, one of the first deacons, held the cloaks while those who stoned him. He's on his way to Syria, Damascus, Syria, to persecute Christians. And on his way, and here, this is my prayer to you. If you're going in the wrong direction, Lord, please knock them off their pony. Lord, see, when God knocks you down, it's to save your life. So he's on his arrogant little pony. He's going to Tarsus or uh, to Damascus to persecute more Christians. And the Holy Spirit went, poop, knocked him off his pony, hit him so hard he went blind, couldn't see. I mean, knocked him out cold. And he comes to and he's laying there and he can't see and all the other guys with him are wondering what the heck happened. And Jesus said, saw Paul, Listen, why are you persecuting me? I'm going to deviate even further. One of my favorite sayings, I heard it years and years ago. When Christ was on the cross, you were on his mind. You, by name. Your face, your image was before him. And when we continue in sin and we are his, here's what Jesus is saying. Why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. And then he prays the most powerful prayer. It's my go-to prayer. This is a prayer I believe God is mandated to answer. I hope that's not boldness or arrogance, but I believe it to be so. Lord, what would you have me to do? When you get to a point in your life and you're, and you're turning to Jesus, you're turning away from a sin, you're turning away from bad debt, you're turning away from a bad relationship, you're turning away from the very things you know you shouldn't be doing. Lord, what would you have me to do? Where would you have me to walk? And, and listen, God's going to most likely tell you something that has nothing to do with what you're doing. Oh, Paul, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to a street called Straight. You're going to be blind for a few days. I'm going to send this guy named Barnabas. He's going to tell you what you need to do next. So the Lord sent the church to him. And Paul turned around and went and started planting the church. I promise you this. The body of Christ, we are... We are the only Jesus this world is ever going to see. The church of Jesus Christ is the body of Christ. We are the bride of Christ. 
And when you have someone that's going in the wrong direction and you really want to help them and you really don't know what to say, send them to a street called North River Avenue. Take them by the hand if you would. Bring them to church. The Holy Spirit of the living God can answer any question people are asking, even if we don't know they're asking it. I can promise you this. Next week, Pastor Mark is going to be answering questions that you have. I, I know that he will. Stop. Look for the ancient path. And, and that, that the word ancient path there, the, the Hebrew, the better translation, the more accurate translation is the eternal way. Ask for the eternal way. Ask for the way that was and is and is to come. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody can get to the Father but through him. Turn to Jesus. And again, ask. That's the most powerful part of that, that three prong. Stop, look, and ask. Lord, what would you have me to do? Pastor Mark, I'm, I'm having a struggle in my marriage. I'm having a struggle at work. Guide me, help me. He's God's man for us. He is our pastor. He's the under shepherd. We're the sheep. God will speak through your pastor, our pastor. He will. Pastor Mark, I'm sure it's happened already. You've said things you didn't even know you knew. Where'd that come from? Thank you, Lord. Stop doing what you're doing. If what you're doing is hurting. Stop it. I, this actually happened. I, this really happened. Years ago, racing motorcycles, I, I, every, everything you see except my head has been in the cast. And it's been bandaged a lot. And I remember I kept dislocating my shoulder. And I said, doctor, every time I race, I go like this. My, it hurts. He said, don't do that. Well, most likely, the severity of our sin, and it very, listen, what may be a great sin to me might be something you can overcome in, by yourself. You know, I don't need to worry about that. I don't have a problem with that. Well, praise the Lord. But most likely, you can't. Most likely, you can't get on the right path. Most likely, you can't stop what you're doing. Oh, you might be able to do it for a season. You might be able to quit for a few days. But eventually, if you're trying to do it in your own flesh, in your own self, in your own power, it'll get you. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. But God demonstrated his own love toward us, and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Look for the right path. Ask. What must I do, Lord? To whom can I turn? Luke 13, or Luke 18, 13. Oh, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. And he will be. Repentance isn't so much turning from sin as it is turning to Christ. Many people have stopped a particular sin, but have just turned to an even greater one. I, I wrote this this morning when I, God gave it to me in church. And let me see if I can find it, and I want to read it to you. And I'll close with this, Pastor. Repentance is a process. The deeper we dig, the darker the sin. We see the surface, but sin's roots go deep. The root of sin is pride, the darkest of sins. Proverbs 16, 18 says, But the fear of the Lord is hatred of evil, pride and arrogance, 
and the way of evil and the perverse speech I hate. You know why God hates our sin? Because it hurts us and he loves us. Understand this. God might hate and despise your sin because of what it does to you. But man, oh man, does he love you. It's been a process of turning.